Hi, welcome back everyone for another upper video, me Robert here. In this video, you will learn how to make HTTP requests to external APIs. As always, we will start with a quick overview and then we will implement it live in the system. So if you like this content, please don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button and also the notification bell below so you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. Now let's do a quick overview. In order to make HTTP requests to external APIs, we have three approaches. The HTTP communication via URL, which is the blue one here. Then the HTTP communication via communication arrangements, the green one. And the HTTP communication via destination service, which is the red one here. This one is already deprecated, so I won't cover it in this video. The first communication type, HTTP communication via URL, requires just ABAP code. So we don't need to do any configuration in SAP PTP or S4HANA. However, it's mainly recommended for public services where you don't need authentication, since it's not a good idea to store credentials in your ABAP code. However, if you have the possibility to store your credentials in other services like open connectors, this approach potentially would also make sense for authenticated scenarios. The second communication type, HTTP communication via communication arrangements, requires a configuration in Eclipse. We have to define the outbound service here and also the communication scenario. Additionally, it requires a configuration in SAP BTP, respectively in S4HANA if you're on an S4HANA system. Basically, we have to define a communication system and a communication arrangement. If we want to request a service that requires authentication, then we also need to define and create a communication user. Additionally, also with this approach, we have to write some ABAP code. So let's switch into Eclipse, where we will implement the first communication type just in ABAP. And then we will implement the second communication type by configuration in Eclipse and in SAP BTP, and we will write the required ABAP code here as well. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's look into the code that I've prepared for you. I've created two classes. The first one is the HTTP request runner class, and the second one is the communication handler class. The communication handler class does the heavy lifting by providing three methods, one method per communication type. For the HTTP communication via URL, I've created the method send request by URL. For the HTTP communication via communication arrangement, I've created the method send request by arrangement. And for the HTTP communication via destination service, I've prepared the method send request by test service. However, I won't cover this one since this approach is deprecated. But before we look into the implementation of the first method, let's look into the other class, the HTTP request runner class here. The HTTP request runner class is an executable class that implements the interface if OOADT class run. So we can execute this class and output its results here in the console. This class has a constructor and in this constructor, I create an object instance of the communication handler class. And I store this instance in the private variable communication handler that is defined here in the private section. Additionally, you find some other private variables here that we also instantiate here in the constructor. These are the host name, the URI, the video URL, and the query. Concatenated together, these variables build the URL that we want to request. So in our example, we want to request this URL here that returns the fields of a provided YouTube video as a JSON string. Therefore, we build the URL as follows. Here we have the host name, which we set here the URI, which is OEmbed, you can find here. 
So this basically tells YouTube to return the video as JSON in a JSON format. And as a query parameter, we provide the YouTube video itself here. Again, we set this here in a private variable. And then we will store this JSON response in another private variable named JSON string here. In the private section of this uh, class, I've uh, implemented these two methods, send request by URL and send request by arrangement. Now let's look into both of them. I execute both of them in the class runner main method. So this will execute both approaches and output the result in the console here. So let's try it out by pressing F9 and executing this class. So here in the console, you can see that each method gives us the correct JSON string as response. Let's look into the implementation of our first approach, which is HTTP communication via URL that I've implemented in the method send request by URL. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically building the request string and then I pass this request string to the send request by URL method of the communication handler class that I've previously instantiated in the constructor. I get back an HTTP response of type if web HTTP response. And here I read the status of this response. And with the get text method, I can get the text content uh, of the response, which is a JSON string. I store this JSON string in my private variable JSON string. And finally, I output response from send request by URL followed by the status code and the reason, which you can see here, followed by the JSON string in a new line that you can see here. Now let's look a little bit deeper into the send request by URL method that I've implemented in the communication handler class. For this purpose, we switch into the communication handler class here and we scroll down to the implementation of the method send request by URL. Here you can see that I am dynamically creating the HTTP destination by calling the create by URL method in the class CL HTTP destination provider. And as a parameter, I pass in the requested URL string here. Then I create an HTTP client by passing in the HTTP destination to the method create by HTTP destination in the class CL Web HTTP Client Manager. Then I set the header fields for my HTTP request as follows. This basically advises my client to accept the JSON format. And then I execute the HTTP GET request and store the response in this variable. Since I have defined this variable in the definition here of this method, in the returning statement here, I can receive this response in my HTTP request runner class here with this statement. So that's basically all you need for the HTTP communication via URL. But now let's look into the implementation of the HTTP communication via communication arrangement. As already mentioned, this does not just require an implementation in the ABAP code, but also a configuration in SAP S4HANA or SAP BTP. In our example, I will show you how to set things up in Eclipse and in SAP BTP. First, we create an outbound service. You can do this, for example, by right-clicking on your favorite packages, then new and other ABAP repository object here. Then you type out for outbound and you can see the outbound service here. We click on outbound service. You choose your package here. Then you enter a name for your outbound service. In my case, it's set YouTube OBS 000. The description is YouTube outbound service. In my case, of course, you're free to choose your own description. And here, last but not least, you have to enter a service type. And in our case, the service type is an HTTP service. 
Please note if I choose here the HTTP service, the outbound service name gets a suffix rest here. And then you hit next and then finish. Optionally, you also can set a default path prefix here. However, I don't do this here since I prefer to do this in the ABAP codes directly. Next, you need to create a communication scenario. In order to create this, you again can right click on your favorite packages, new other repository object. And here you type scenario. And here you find the communication scenario. You choose your package here, then you enter a name for the communication scenario. In my case, it's this one, set API YouTube communication scenario number zero. And then I've added a description here. Then again, you hit next here and then finish. Here on your communication scenario page, you find the outbound tab at the bottom of the page. Here, you click on it. And here you can add the outbound service that you've previously created. We hit add and we enter the name of our outbound service. And then we hit finish. Here at the top of the page, you can choose the supported authentication methods. If your service doesn't require authentication, like our sample YouTube service, then you click unauthenticated here. Then you save this scenario and then you hit publish locally here on the top right of the window. Next, we switch into our ABAP environment in SAP BTP. Here you find the communication management with the communication arrangements, the communication systems and maintain communication users. Our service doesn't require authentication, so we will skip this point here. But what we need to do is we have to set up a communication system. Here you can see that I've already created a communication system for YouTube. However, you can create a new communication system for your external service by hitting new here on the top right. I open my existing com communication system for YouTube. Here you can see that you have defined a system ID and a system name for your communication system. And you have to set the host name and the port of your external service here. Please note that in this communication approach, the host name that we define here is used instead of the host name that we have defined in the ABAP code in the first example. Once you've created your communication system, you scroll back here to your communication management and then you can create your communication arrangement with this tile here. We click on it. Again, you can see that I've already created a communication arrangement here. You can create a new communication arrangement by clicking on the new button here on the top right. Please note, here you have to enter the communication scenario that you've previously created with Eclipse. And then you hit create. Here in the communication system field, you have to choose the communication system that you've previously created. In my case, it's the communication system for YouTube. When I choose this communication system, the service URL here is composed accordingly. Then you can save your communication arrangement. Now that we have successfully created the communication system, the communication arrangement, and optionally also a communication user, we switch back to our ABAP code. Here in our HTTP request runner class, we have a look into the implementation of our method send request by arrangement. Here we implement the HTTP communication via communication arrangement. So what I did here is I created a variable that holds the communication scenario ID here. Please note this variable has to be of this type here. And then I created another variable named service ID, which holds the service ID of our outbound service. So now I can call the send request by arrangement method in my communication handler object. And I pass in my scenario ID, my service ID of the outbound service, as well as the URI and the query. These two I've previously set in the constructor. As in the example before, my communication handler method send request by arrangement 
returns an HTTP response. And from this HTTP response, I can get the status and the text, which basically is the JSON string. And here again, I output this JSON string together with the status code. You have already seen this output here in the demo. But now let's have a closer look into the send request by arrangement method of my communication handler class. I open my communication handler class and here I scroll to the method send request by arrangement. Here we use the clcom arrangement factory class to find the correct communication arrangement by our scenario ID. Once we have our communication arrangement, we use the create by com arrangement method of the clhttp destination provider class to get our destination object. With this destination object, we now can create our HTTP client like we did in the first example. With this HTTP client object, we can now build the request object here. And here we can set the URI path and the query. Eventually, we can execute our HTTP GET request and as response, we get a response object. As in the first example, I have defined the response object here as a returning value. Therefore, we can get it here in our request runner. So that's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.